Hey everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we are unboxing the 50th Scrawler Box. Hooray! Uh, I did have my poopy pants on a bit earlier. I accidentally saw on social media the kind person that posted the entire contents of the box. Uh, it's not even someone I follow on Instagram. So I was kind of in a bit of a mood because I now know who the featured artist is and I know what one of the supplies are. But I managed to scroll past it quick enough to not see anything else because as you guys know, I like to do the unboxings blind. I am, however, quite excited about this month's box. So I just want to get to top down view and do a kind of blind unboxing. Let's get going. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Let's get into this 50th scroller box. Okay, so yeah, I already knew this part. This is the work by the featured artist and it is Rin from Drawing With Waffles. Uh, she has uh, one of the most popular art YouTube channels. Um, so as per all her social media is down at the bottom and this is very typical of her style she draws characters and it's usually f young female characters and her favorite color is purple so that is um it's actually very cute i love her artwork and she is one of the quickest sketchers i have ever seen she says herself it's the favorite like her favorite part of the process and she has done it a bajillion times she's been drawing a long time but she can literally rattle together a character in a really high standard sketch in like a couple of minutes it's amazing i am in awe yeah so this is expected as well this is smooth uh smooth paper and funnily enough it's suitable for markers because that was the other thing that i knew was in this month's scroller box which kind of bums me out a wee bit but these things can't be helped sometimes so as per usual we've got a sticker and it's purple, obviously, <laughs> they go with the theme. And this is our uh, list of supplies as well as our prompt, which we'll look at in a little minute. Uh, a set of Copic markers, and it's Copic Chow markers, and there looks like some other things in here. So let's uh, let's bust into these and find out what else is going to be in here. So this isn't a complete ruined surprise for me. Um, it's only partial. <laughs> so we have two Copic Chow markers and these are in lovely sort of, of lilac shades and it's BV so they're blue violet colours. Um, I already own all of the BV colours in Copic Sketch markers so I'm not going to use these for the scroller challenge but I do want to show you them um, and just explain a little bit about them. Copic Chow markers are a slightly less expensive alternative to the traditional uh, Copic markers and the Copic Sketch markers. The good thing about the chow markers is that they have a brush tip on the on the end which this the traditional original Copics don't and the Copic sketch markers do so in a cheaper marker you're getting the beautiful Copic brush tip and you're also getting this chisel tip as well so the difference and the reason that these are cheaper than the Copic sketch markers is number one the barrel's a lot smaller so it holds a lot less ink than the other marker and the second thing is that these come in a much more limited range of colours compared to the sketch markers the sketch markers cover the entire range and the chow markers are slightly more limited but if you are on a budget and still want a high quality alcohol marker the sketch markers uh, excuse me the chow markers are brilliant so we'll swatch these out in a little minute. Uh, a Copic Multiliner in wine and just by the casing, I don't know if that's actually going to be what the ink's like, but it is quite sparkly. It might be this colour though, you know, this that would suggest the wine colour. So we can check that out too. We also have, ooh, what is this? This looks sparkly too. At you speak up pen, again, I have seen these. I have never used them and it says twinkling like stars on it. That's super cute. And this one is pink. So I'm hoping that this is a pink sparkly pen. Well done for that little Copic set. That's really nice. That is such a nice thing to have in a scroller box because these items will obviously all work together they've all come from Copic. Oh look a pencil! Uh, a Faber-Castell two and a half which is equal to an HB. Feels like a cheap pencil. How many pencils have we had? But it's good to have one. I, I actually really like getting a pencil in the scroller box because when it comes to the scroller challenge I'm really strict on only using what's in the box so having a pencil is like a lifesaver for me so yes. 
And uh, my husband, Mr. Jim, he goes through pencils like they're going out of fashion, so I just give them to him. A Derwent paint pen. I have not seen one of these before either, and I'm hoping that this is white. Yes, it is. And it's a 0 0.5 nib width, so we can test that out. Oh, yay! We've got a Lyra kneadable eraser, and it comes in this cute little dinky box. Look at this. This is lovely. Oh, can't get into it. So, yeah, there we go. Oh, it's so small. Oh, that's so nice. And it feels quite, uh, it feels quite kneadable as well. So we can have a little bash at that as well. These are really handy, um, especially if you're someone like me who has pets. I have three dogs who spend most of their time in the same room as me. And my kneaded erasers tend to get pretty grubby pretty quickly, even if I'm really careful with them. So having something to keep it in is excellent and also as well I think it would be quite satisfying see when you've kneaded it out of shape see just smooshing it back into this little plastic box I think that's going to be really satisfying and as per usual we also have our sweet which is parma violets I absolutely hate these they taste like soap they're definitely acquired taste so I will be giving these to Mr Gem also he's getting a he's getting a good deal out of this box this month <laughs> oh oh look we have a little scroller box Pin. how cute is that and it says a special gift for you to celebrate our 50th box that is so nice and it's it's a really good size as well it's not like completely in your face but you could pin that to your jacket that's really cool I like that so let's test some of these supplies out and we can have a look at our instructions and uh, while we're at this uh, the Copic purple doodle pack a convenient little pack I agree. Combination of colour coordinated pens and markers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the other thing I meant to mention earlier about the Copic Chow markers when I went on my little uh, my little diatribe about markers is these are refillable and they use the same refills as the other Copic markers as well. So they are environmentally friendly, but they're also pocket friendly as well. And that is why I spent the time and money investing in Copic stuff because once you've bought the marker, you can refill it as many times as you like and the refills are quite pocket friendly. Now, as with that all alcohol markers, these are going to bleed through the paper. So I have got another sheet of uh, bleed proof marker paper just tucked in the back of here because I don't want to ruin the rest of this book. Okay, so we've got BV00 and with all of these Copic channel markers, they have the code on the, on the barrel like this. But if you turn it round, the colour name is also on the barrel with the standard Copics the name is on the end but these have little sort of ventilated caps on them. I'm just going to grab the sketch markers just so that you can see the difference. Okay so here's the equivalent in the sketch markers so that you, you can see there that the, the barrel is oval shaped for a start but it's also much wider as well so it, they do take a little bit more ink. Other than that there's not much of a difference between the the two sets of markers. Um, I like the fact that the Copic sketch have the, the number and the colour name on the end because they're supposed to be stacked horizontally when you store them. So when you're looking at your rack, you can see the names on the ends. That was just a, a personal thing though. So let's try out these colours and see what's here. These brush nibs are lovely. They're just, they're absolutely wonderful. I really like them. I'm a big fan of them. Oh, that's a really dark colour. Oh. One of the things I just want to test real quick is uh, how well these two blend together. Bearing in mind we're going to be working on marker paper which should technically blend. So this is just cheap marker paper I've got but it is designed for alcohol markers. So we're going to try a little bit of wet blending here. So when you're wet blending you want to make sure that you're really generous with your colour and then you can start to smoosh them together. Now, there is quite a difference between these two colours, so, you know, there's quite a big jump, so I'm not really expecting them to blend all that well, if I'm honest. Um, and as you can see, it's not great. It's not terrible. Right, we'll let that dry and see how it looks. I'll come back in here, and I am a little bit more curious to test out these other Copic items because these are things that I haven't tried. So this is the multi-liner which um, yeah it's like a berry coloured fine liner. Um, I don't really know how I feel about this. It's really small like the pen itself is quite you know like this way it's quite small and it feels kind of diddly in my hand. It seems to it seems to be okay in terms of being a fine liner. One of the things I like to do is a little bit of hatching, so that's always a thing for me. But the, the ink flows really smooth. The other thing I want to test as well is what happens 
when we put alcohol marker over the top of this is it going to smear or bleed because that's quite important if we want to use the items side by side so again i'm just going to give that a little minute to make sure it's absolutely dry okay so i'm going to try the lighter one over the top of this now and i'm, I'm kind of scrubbing at it and it seems to be holding up reasonably well actually so that's good that means we can use the two together and there's not going to be any issues and i also have the little sparkly one here which i'm quite excited about Oh, it's like a felt tip. Oh, okay. Oh, that's quite pretty. It, they're actually quite sparkly, but you're going to get quite a fine line. It's sort of like a metallic or sparkly. I don't even know if you can see that in the light. There we go. So we seem to have a nice little set of materials to work with here. The other thing that we have to test is the pencil and the eraser. So this is just an HP pencil. So um, I would use a range of pencils if I was wanting to do any sort of shading uh, with, with a pencil. And this is really just for sketching, I would think. Um, you can get some shading in with an HB, but you, it's kind of hard work. I have tried it. I did do a, a drawing purely in an HB pencil just to see what would happen, and it turned out okay. Oh, I love them when they're new like this. Oh, right, let's get some heat into this. Yep, there we go. It's it's quite easy to knead, actually. That is quite a soft kneaded eraser. This is my preferred eraser um, when I'm working in pencil. Right, let's just take a line straight down the middle and see how that goes. Yeah, okay, that, that's going to do a job for you. That's absolutely fine. And now the best bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is considerably good fun. I like that a lot. I can't get the lid back on. There we go. Last but not least, I'm going to try out this Derwent paint pen. It does have quite a fine tip on it, so we shall see how this, uh, how this fares. Now, we better read it on the barrel because I'm sure there's going to be a, a way to prime this. Shake well, depress for 10 seconds and wait. Oh, I don't like the wait. Okay, so there's a little ball bearing in there. Roll my sleeve up, goodness me. And we're going to give this a really good shake. Now we depress and we wait. Nothing's happening. Yeah, nothing's happening. I would just like to say the motion of the, the nib going in and out, which is the case with, with all these kind of paint type pens, it seems quite loose in the casing. And I don't know whether I've just got a dodgy one or that this is literally doing nothing. Oh, there we go. Yay. Let's go. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's just a blob of paint. This is like a wee teeny tiny Posca pen. It'll be interesting to see how it dries though. And you can see that, that that's standing out quite well. So let's just do a solid block here. Yeah, and you can get you can get some quite thin lines with it as well. Okay, no, I'm quite impressed with that. Yeah, that's not up to much really. Um, th those two have gone together quite well, so we can't complain about that. So considering there is quite a difference between the two colours, if you were going to if you were going to blend alcohol markers normally and it's one of the reasons that Copic have a numbering system um, you would probably pick if you're going to use the BV00 which is this one here you would maybe pick like um, like 01 or 02 to blend into as an intermediate step between these two colours. I'm just going to give you a demonstration of that real quick with the my my own Copic markers. So I've picked up the BV02 which is I say is like a middle step between the BV00 and the BV04. So it's turning into a marker tutorial. There's the O2, so we would put that in there and then you can just blend that out with the paler colour. And then we can go in with the O4 at the bottom here. And then we can go back to that mid-tone and just blend that in. We'll give that a little minute to dry. Yeah, it would have been nice to have a set of three so that you could get some nice even blends. But obviously the idea behind this little doodle pack is to have as many different tools as possible in one space. So I understand why they've done it. And it's not really an issue, but that's just, uh, you know, that's just something that I would have liked. Okay, so you can see there the difference. This is the one with the three markers, so it was with the intermediate marker. And you can see that the blend's a lot more gradual compared to just having the, the two. And that is exactly the same type of ink, so that's just an aside. Okay, the paint pen is water soluble. That's really interesting as well. So you could do something with that uh, by diluting it and you you know, you could make it more transparent and it would be more sort of watercolour-esque. So that's really good to know. Okay, so what they're saying about the paper is quite interesting. Now, uh, this is Canson The Wall. 
220 GSM paper, so that is quite a heavy, a heavy grade of paper. And it says a revolutionary paper specifically designed for graffiti artists, illustrators and designers. So that to me says that it's designed to take heavy loads of ink, which is great, obviously, with the Copics. Uh, design features make it completely opaque, bleed proof and double sided. Now that's a bonus as well. It's always nice to be able to use both sides. It's resistant to alcohol markers. Ah, that could be a problem. Because of its unique design, ink will never bleed through, even when subject to heavy and repeated use of markers. So two sheets gives you four surfaces to scroll on. Can you break the wall? Do we want to try and break the wall? Of course we want to try and break the wall. So let's, uh, let's abuse this marker paper a little bit. Now the fact that it resists alcohol markers means that we should be able to blend really well on the paper that's provided in the box. And I have to say it's something that I felt in previous scroller boxes we've been kind of let down by the the paper that they've given us and it hasn't really fitted in with um you know the other contents of the box um this isn't blending at all i can tell you that straight away look at that line there and that is still wet so i should be able to manipulate that ink while it's sitting on top of the paper like that but it's just ah Wow, this is frustrating. Yep, okay, so not great for quick blending. That might be something that we have to put a bit of practice into. I'm the first person to admit I'm not marker expert. But I've given that a pretty heavy going over and there isn't even a hint of a ghost on the back, so that is pretty awesome. So yeah, you do have four drawing surfaces, which is awesome. Let's take a look at the scroller challenge, which is addressed to the nines. So we're going to be thinking about... Um, being very dressed up or very embellished, that kind of thing. And again, I think that that is probably really suited to someone like Rin Style who draws particularly female characters. As you all know, I am not a person that draws humans very often because I don't like them. Um, but that's not to say that I can't embellish an animal. So if you're thinking about ideas for the prompt yourself, that's the obvious one to go to. If you want to think a bit more outside the box, you could think about inanimate objects or still lifes and you could have a, a Christmas tree that's really like over decorated or maybe like, um, like, a, like a headdress or you know a piece of jewellery that's really sort of ornate and that kind of thing so there's quite a lot of ways to actually deal with that prompt you don't always have to go with the you know the first sort of glaringly obvious choice yeah that's just something for you to think about okay so a quick recap of the 50th scroller box we have two sheets of Canson 220 GSM paper which is the beans by the way we have our featured artist which is run from drawing with waffles we have our list of supplies our sweet that tastes like soap this month our nice purple scroller box sticker keeping the theme and it matches my nails we have the Lyra needed eraser in the cute little plastic pot a Faber-Castell HB pencil the Derwent paint pen in white which is water soluble so that's fun this really cool doodle pack of purple supplies from Copic I think this is fabulous and if I was working in a, a colour that I didn't have a lot of supplies in I would buy one of these little doodle packs that would be awesome the commemorative pin <laughs> I think this is a really good box this month and I'm really glad that all of the contents weren't spoiled for me I would love to hear what you think about this box thank you so much for watching and stay tuned later on next week where I will be uploading the scroller challenge using these lovely supplies have a good day everyone and we'll see you next time bye for now